In this flask, I have a small amount of calcium hydroxide. To that, I'm going to add an even amount of ammonium chloride. This will produce water, ammonia gas, and calcium chloride. You can use sodium hydroxide instead of calcium hydroxide. In fact, it probably will produce more ammonia since it's a stronger base. But right now, all I have is calcium hydroxide. Now I'm going to add a small amount of water to it to dissolve the chemical. This part's sort of toxic and makes a bad gas. And I'll heat the solution. You never say. Excuse me, Mason. Remember to do this outside or in a well-ventilated area because ammonia is pretty toxic. To the flask, I'm adding a test tube or something that looks like a test tube. It came in my kit with some cotton wool in it and a test tube on top with a glass rod which extends into it. Have you ever dropped and the ammonia will come from that glass rod. The, the basic setup is a flask containing calcium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide with ammonium chloride attached to a plastic test tube or looks like a syringe with cotton balls in it. I'm not sure what the cotton balls do, but it's from my kit, so I'm following the instructions. Attached to another test tube with a piece of red litmus paper in it to indicate when ammonia gas is formed. Ammonia gas will form ammonium hydroxide in presence of water, which will turn the litmus paper blue. Right now I'm dissolving the chemical so I can get them to react. Here you can see the red piece of litmus paper. After some time, it will become blue. You never say, hey, you're the man Are you sure? Say there's the flask again. You can see there's condensation on the inside of it. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, just put it. Yeah, that's good. You never say, hey, you I don't know if you can see it, but the very tip of the litmus paper is starting to turn blue. Now you have a better view of it. Don't jiggle, don't jiggle. It's gonna make the whole thing like Now you can definitely see it's turning purplish blue. This indicates that ammonia is being formed. probably because you think you're cooler than me. Aren't you gonna say something? No, I don't talk during the video. You can talk. Now we're gonna count to 20. One. Now I'm going to let the test tube sit for just a little longer to collect any extra ammonia. To fill it up with ammonia. You can see the contents in the flask is bubbling. And here's some water with litmus solution and tartaric acid, which gives it a red color because in the presence of tartaric acid, litmus solution becomes red. And what should happen is that after I place this in, it should become blue because ammonium hydroxide is a base which would turn the litmus solution blue. I'm pushing in the stopper a little harder. And watch this. There's going to be a fountain. That's pretty cool. Are you watching? No, it's gonna Get ready. It's this is pretty energetic. Look, it's going to fountain up. That was cool. Did you see that? that was not so much of a fountain than a, yeah, sure more like an explosion know. inside, but not really an explosion because nothing broke. More like a splat. I'm gonna try this again. This time I got better results. Instead of getting a big splat, I got something with more fountain-like results.
Isn't that cool? What's happening here is that about 4,000 liters of ammonia can dissolve in one liter of water, which means that the ammonia in the test tube is attracted to the water in the beaker, therefore taking the water out of the beaker and into the test tube. For watching, please subscribe. H A H W K one four. Do you like the lab coat? Oh yes, I do. Okay, bye.